Hello everybody, this is Mr. Bergman and I want to share with you how to do application problem number 12-1. Now it says employee time cards are given below and I want to share with you what a time card looks like. You have a couple different sections here. You got this top one where the employee information is located. So you have the employee name, employee number. A lot of times employees are given an identification number uh, very much like students are instead of their social security number. Um, that helps do some things in the system. Now, also, pay period ending. That's the time period that you're getting paid for. So let's take a look at how that, how that is going to go. I have a calendar right here to share with you what a pay period uh, actually looks like. And so, for instance, let's say that you have a weekly pay period. Well, a weekly pay period usually begins on a Saturday or a Monday and it will extend all the way to a Friday. Okay, now if that's just for one week, that's called a weekly pay period. And so the period, pay period would end on the 10th. Uh, you may get paid on Monday, you may get paid the following week. Okay, now sometimes what businesses will do is they will pay you bi weekly. With bi basically means two. So you may get paid on the 10th. Two weeks later, you may get paid on the 24th and so forth. With bi-weekly, you get paid 26 times a year because, well, there are 52 weeks in a year. Now, with Hobby Shack, what they do is they offer they do what is called a semi-monthly pay period. And what a semi means is half. So it means the first half of the month you get paid, the second half of the month you get paid. A lot of people think it's the same as bi-weekly, but you actually get paid because there's 12 months a year and you get paid twice a month, you get paid 24 times rather than 26 times. So this is how a semi-monthly pay period would work. It may start on the 1st, but it would end on the 15th. Okay, So you may get paid on Friday the 17th, but the actual pay period itself is covering all 15 days. The second half of that pay period would begin on the 16th, and it would extend all the way down to the 30th or 31st for the end of the month. And then once again, the following month, it would start on the 1st, and then it would extend all the way to the 15th. So that's what a semi-monthly pay period looks like. So let's go to the application problem and show you exactly how to do it. And you'll notice that your time card has different times that people have checked in and checked out. It's pretty standard. Uh, it, this is how it used to be. Now everything's electronic, but there are still businesses that do this. One of the big things that you have to realize is that you want to round to the nearest quarter. So the most important thing to, to remember with the card or the time cards is that we're going to be rounding to the nearest quarter hour. So if you think of this as a clock, uh, an old school clock, you actually would divide, and, and I'm actually not dividing this up very well, you want to divide a clock up by uh, the quarter of an hour. So for instance, this is the top of the hour. This is 15 minutes. This is 30 minutes. So I'll put 30 right down here. This is 45 minutes. Okay. So when we're looking at this, uh, if it is 1:15, that means it is a quarter of an hour has gone by. Okay. If we started something at 1 o'clock and we went to 1:30, that is. A half of an hour right if we started at 1 o'clock and we went to 45 that would be three quarters of an hour and then if we started at 1 o'clock and went to 2 o'clock that would be one hour so it's very important to keep this in mind uh, as you're going through these exercises and we're gonna go through this next uh, transaction I'm gonna put this clock up here just to help us out okay so we're looking at 759 759 if we're looking at this clock right here 759 is actually closer to eight o'clock than it is to 745 so we would actually round this we're just going to round it it may not seem like you should but we're going to round it and say yeah 759 we'll say it's eight o'clock 1201 right here is actually closer to 12 than it is 1215 so we're going to say yeah that's 12 o'clock all right, so 1256, 
1256 is actually closer to, well, 1 o'clock than it is to 115. 501 right here, 501 is actually closer to 5 o'clock than it is to 515. Now, why did we do that? Well, we want to calculate on here the total number of hours. And you'll notice we've we're going to calculate for the morning. We're going to calculate for the afternoon. We're going to add both of these up, and that's going to be our regular number of hours. Overtime hours are calculated separately, and they have a separate column right here. So with these right here, we take 12 um, and 8. And probably the easiest thing to do is to subtract when you left minus when you came in. So what I mean is you're going to take 12 o'clock minus 8 o'clock. And when you do that, that means that you get four hours. So we'll just cancel that out. It means you worked four hours in the morning. When you left at 5 o'clock and you came in, if you subtract those two numbers, once again, you worked another four hours. So we'll just cross those out. So that means you worked four in the morning, four in the afternoon, and when you put them both together, you add them up, okay, that equals eight, and you're going to put eight hours right in here, okay? So let's do that right now on a plea. So we're going to go ahead and put in eight hours, okay? Once again, you, I'm going to skip this, and uh, we'll come back to that a little bit later. But right down here, once again, you have 756 and you have 1201. So we're once again rounding. So 756 is four minutes away from 8 o'clock, and it's 11 minutes away from 745. So it's actually closer, to, once again, to 8 o'clock. 1201 is obviously closer to 12. 1258 is closer to 1 o'clock than it is 1245. 504 is closer to 5 o'clock than it is 515. Okay. Then you have overtime hours over here. So 7 o'clock is actually closer to 701. And 8 o'clock is closer to 802. So once again, how do we do this? Well, we've calculated the regular number of hours in the morning. So 12 minus 8, once again, is 4. 5 o'clock minus 1 o'clock is another 4 hours, okay? These are the regular hours worked. So we're going to add both of these up, and we will put 8 hours in the regular hours column. Now, we have overtime, okay? Overtime has been calculated where this is closer to 7 and this is closer to 8. So we take the time we left, 8 o'clock, minus 7, and that means that we worked 1 hour overtime. As you progress and you go, go throughout here, once again, you'll be able to calculate your regular hours pretty easily. However, right here is the exception to the rule, okay? So 5.59 is closer to 6 o'clock than it is 5.45. And 7.31 is closer to 7.30, okay? Now, with 7.30 we're not going to put 7.3. That doesn't make sense. Let's go back to our example right here at the clock. If we go to the clock, and you remember that the hour is actually split in the quarters, okay, 7.30, this is 15, and this is 30, okay, 7.30 7 is actually a half, one half, of the clock, so it's actually 0.5. I can't really draw with this very well. So instead of saying it's 7.3, okay, what we're, what we're going to say here is that this should be um, 7.5. Okay, so you have 6 o'clock right here and 7.5. Okay, because it's half an hour, it's half of an hour. So when you subtract both of these, you get 1.5, okay? And that should go right in here in the overtime section. Okay, once again, as you're going through this and you're progressing through this, this will be closer to 6 o'clock. This will be closer to 7.30. And once again, 7.30 should be known as 7.5. Now let's say, for instance, this was actually closer to 7.15. 
what you would, would do is you would record that as 7.25 because it's a quarter of an hour, okay? It, let's say that this was closer to 7.45, okay? Once again, you would put down 7.75 because it's three quarters of an hour. So, all right, let's, let's move on here. After you've finished completing all of these, um, I'll show you the next part. Okay, so going through this to double check our answers right here, uh, you're gonna have eight hours in each of the, these sections right here. This right here is gonna be one hour. Okay, um, once again, calculating this, regular hour is gonna be eight. This is gonna be 1.5. This is going to be eight hours. This is going to be eight hours. This is going to be eight hours. Uh, this is going to be 1.5. And once again, this is going to be eight hours. Okay, so why did I do that? Well, this next part, this last part of the card is going to be very simple. We got to calculate the number of hours worked. And we got to keep our regular hours separate from our overtime hours for calculation purposes. And it's very simple. You are going to take all of these numbers right up here and add them up. So 8 plus 8 is 16, 24, 32, 40. So this is 40 total hours. Okay, and once again, we're doing two different weeks because this is a semi-monthly pay period. Um, all of these are added up and that equals, that equals 40 hours as well. So when you add both of these up, that's 80 total hours. They go right here. Okay, so 80 total hours. Let me just type that in because I'm having some problems with my mouse here. So 80 total hours. Okay, so then the next part is you want to take all of your overtime hours and add them up. So 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So you're going to put the number of overtime hours worked right there. Now also part of the employee's card is you want to know how many hours that they worked. That's very, very important. So it's very easy, you take 80 plus four, okay, you add that up, and then you put your answer right here, which is gonna be 84 hours. All right, next thing is, is very simple as well. You're gonna calculate how much they earned before taxes or gross pay. So you're gonna take $80 times 11.80, and when you multiply both of those together, let's take it up, Let's take it and find it out. So we're going to take 80 times 11.80. We get $944. So we'll put that right there. Okay, we want to calculate the overtime. Now, typically what we've done is we could take 4 times 11.80 times 1.5, and that would work. However, we want to know how much they're making per overtime hour. So we have to take 11.80, so 11.8, times 1.5 and we get $17.70. We got to figure out how much the rate is for overtime. That's going to make it easy to calculate overtime because now all we have to do is take four hours times 17.70. So let me multiply those together and I get $70.80. Alright, so after that we have to figure out the total amount of earnings. How much did they make before taxes? So we're going to take 944 plus 7080, add both of those up, and we're going to get $1,014.80. So that is how you calculate that card. Your job is to finish up the following two cards.